river run, run through the hills, run river run to the sea, run river run to your place beneath the sun, run river run over me, run through the land, you run through my soul, bring me wisdom and peace, run through all he this is Jan Lewis. Welcome to be my guest. Today we have, from Dedham, all the way from Dedham, we have Donna Newman Bluestein. And I read about Donna in one of the Sunday papers. And she does Dance for Connection, Dance Movement Therapist. And Donna, welcome. This is for people with dementia problems. Am I correct? That's who I specialize in working with now, yes. When did you get into this? Well, I've been working as a dance movement therapist since 1978, and um, I began working with people with cognitive deficits um, in about 19, um, 1981, um, but I, I'd say about 20 years um, during that time I've focused particularly on people with dementia, particularly the last... 13 years or so. When you graduated from high school, did you know this was a field you were going into? Did you go to college for, for it? No, not at all. No. All on your own? No, um, I was actually, um, I, I was an English major in college, so it was about communication, yeah. but verbal communication. And um, I was a baby boomer, and so <laughs> I didn't get a job because there were too many English teachers. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, so I just did other things for a while and then um, knew that I needed to find a, a career path. Um, but I wasn't particularly concerned about it at the moment when I went to see um, Alvin Ailey Dance Company. And I saw them three times in one week because I loved them so much I just went back day after day. Um, and Judith Jamison in particular who um, is a magnificent black woman, and she just glided across the stage, and I thought, oh, that. That's it. And after the third mm -hmm. night, I dreamt that I was going to teach dance to children. And when I went to work, um, somebody said, "Do you, did you ever hear of dance therapy? And I said, no. And he said, well, uh, I have a friend. Here's her number. Here's her name. And I spoke to her, and she said, study with this person, read that book. Yeah. And that's what I did. And it just, that's what, it was like, talk about doing what your passion is. It just hit you like, you knew. Right, like that. You knew, and you knew you wanted to do it. Was it your idea to do it with for people with dementia? Yeah, or did that just kind of accumulate in your mind, or did you know? That just, that evolved. That evolved. I worked with people of all ages. I worked first in uh, inpatient psychiatric setting. Oh, that would be that would be great. Yeah. I worked with children. I worked with people in a state hospital, helping them transition. These were elderly, who had had so they didn't have dementia per se. They had been um, institutionalized from anywhere from twenty to fifty years. Mm. Mm -hmm. So they'd had lobotomies and they'd had shock treatments. So yeah. they're. Cognition was not what yeah. it was. Hard to reach them on a mental level, but what you have, and she's going to show us what she designed, we, that by reaching them on a physical level, you really connected. We did. We did. And um, it took a lot of patience, yeah. um, but I was intrigued. They were, they were not gone. They were there. They were very much there. And by, uh, what I learned from them was that we all need attention. Everyone needs attention, and that with attention, we flourish. I think this is fantastic. We, by when you first came into it, was it 1978? You said, or was it? Not, yeah, um, right. That's when I started. Was it working. kind of a new, new on the horizon? Um, the f in it was actually in the uh, 1940s that it, the work began, yeah. um, and one of the women who's really responsible for the profession. Um, She's one of the pioneers and responsible for the profession being what it is. Um, she worked at St. E's in Washington, D.C. Her name was Marion Chase. And um, she worked in the state hospital before they were had medications. Sure. And she went onto the units and danced with 
the patients. She brought her cart. Yeah. She wheeled on with her cart and her waltz music and probably other music too, but that's what she's known for. Mm -hmm. And um, and the, what happened was astounding. So that oh. the um, the staff, the nurses, all wanted her to help her. Her, the psychiatrist wanted her, her to see the patients. So this was her paying career? Was it paying, or did she volunteer? I think <clears throat> she got paid. That's yeah. a good question. Yeah. I think maybe initially she didn't, but then I think yeah. she did. She had been a professional dancer. Oh, there you go. She, but yeah. did this, now, Prior. part of your dance therapy, did you have to learn a lot of dancing for part of it, or was it natural for you? Yeah, <clears throat> you, um, coming into the profession, you need to have a lot of dance experience. Okay. So I had some, not as much as most, mm. and then I beefed up on the dance. This is amazing. Now, um, you brought some pictures to show us. Before we show her beautiful creation, show us some of your own examples. And describe what did Paul, can you zoom in on these? These are really neat. These are great. So basically, this is an enlarged, um, my uh, business card enlarged. And this gentleman with whom I'm dancing, um, just for, an example. He has. Um, you may people may be able to see that he has a bandage on his uh, elbow. Yeah. So he had Parkinson's disease, and this was part of a group. Yeah. Um, and he, because he was impulsive, which I believe has to do with the medication people had yeah. have to take for Parkinson's. Yeah. Um, he would wheel around, and then he'd jump out of his wheelchair. Yeah. So they had him restrained. Yeah. And he'd hurt himself, yeah. as you can see. But when he got up and did the polka with me, he was so joyous. Oh, you can see it on his and face. And you can see it on his face. My grandmother and my father's mother had Parkinson's. And I believe that, well, they say pneumonia for most, a lot of elderly people, but I believe that contributed a lot to her death. Right. I do. Right. She was not the, she says, I feel trapped in my body. Yeah. Oh. I remember walking in the hospital. I didn't even walk in the room. I walked right past. My mother said, Jan, that's your grandmother right there. Wow. I walked right past. I didn't even know her. What a beautiful thing. Okay, what else have you got? Here? So I just want to say that there is, there is a dance for Parkinson's disease is a big thing because it, um, it helps people overcome their uh, frozen uh, state. That's what she seemed like. She seemed she'd have that frozen look on her yes, face. Yes, the, the face is often impassive, not... Um, able to move. And shaking. Yes, the, the shake. palsy. Yep. Yep. I remember that very well. So this is the octaband. And this is what she's going to show us that she invented. And um, I created it initially for people with dementia because I wanted them to feel a sense of belonging. It's really important to me that everyone feel a sense of belonging, not just some people. Because as long as some people feel they belong and other people feel outside, mm -hmm. okay. then they um, the people who are outsiders feel pretty terrible. Yeah. And um, so mm -hmm. while I created initially for people with dementia, this is actually a group of women in Serbia, um, sorry, in Bosnia, who um, were widows. Mm -hmm. And I was told that they didn't smile um, prior to this dance program that a woman brought. <laughs> so you went to, to Serbia? I didn't. Somebody so, else did. Somebody else did. With, right. And they did smile. Look at their faces. Oh, yeah, they look like, especially this one, that they're having a ball with this. Right. I'll wait till you see what she created. Oh, my God, this is terrific. So it's being used with people of all ages, all abilities um, across the world. Another one is Back Pocket Dancers. This is an intergenerational dance company to which I belong. And uh, there is, uh, right now, there are nine of us. And we uh, bring our dance performances um, to elder facilities and uh, family-friendly events, the Children's Museum, um, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so okay. you intergenerational, get... 26 to 93. And you, it looks like they're holding someone in the middle. We are. Is that a trust yeah. issue? If you let somebody else hold you like that? You bet. Yeah. <laughs> What's that one where you... Somebody's behind you, and you have to let go and let them catch right, you. Fall. I'm not sure I could do it. I'm not sure I could do it either. <laughs> I don't, I'd have to At know least that not person. now. No. 
Yeah. God, what else have you got? But that's what actually yeah. dance therapy yeah. actually builds that. But this is not dance therapy. It's a dance company. Yeah. Dance pocket dancers. Back pocket, yes. Back pocket it's, dancers. It's a small enough company that it fits in your back pocket. Um, and this is um, uh, the American Dance Therapy Association. Um, is the association that um, in the United States um, that uh, supports and um, uh, grows the profession of dance movement therapy that credentials us and that's www.adta.org where people can find out more if they're interested in learning more about dance movement therapy. Donna, for families who are watching and they have somebody in their family, or maybe they themselves. Um, it could be anybody from recovery and, and mental health issues. It's not just for uh, dementia, right? No, not at all, yes. Uh, recovery from addiction, the help with the dementia, there's Alzheimer's. What are some of the other things that would help? Them? Children with autism. Autism, okay. Um, uh, people, you know, suffering from losses of any kind. Yeah. Um, mental illness. Yeah. Dan, Donna, how can people reach you? Uh, it, we're going to plug you a couple times. How can they reach you if they're interested in this? Okay. Uh, Donna at danceforconnection.com. That's my when email do you have, Do you have classes or do you go to the places for people? For the most part, I go to places. I go to facilities, um, assisted livings, memory cafes, um, and um, work, do a group for an hour. Um, with people with dementia, or, or and older adults, yeah. does not they don't all have dementia. Um, I do trainings, provide trainings to teach other people how to bring dance to people with dementia. Um, it's my belief that people with dementia should be, if they're in an institution of any kind, a residence of any kind other than a home, or in a program, that they should be offered dance daily. Oh, yeah, the music alone, right? It, well, it's not just the music. The music is wonderful, but if you mm -hmm. watch people, they'll just be they'll be moving their heads, they'll be tapping their fingers, tapping their toes. But when you have somebody who brings dance, such as a dance movement therapist, we get people to move their whole bodies, mm. and that's when you feel alive. Oh, definitely. And then once they're alive, once they're with us, they contribute amazing. Now, do you, where you go all over Massachusetts and beyond? Um, for the direct work with people with dementia, I work only in eastern Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. um, to train, I travel around the world. You do travel around the world? Where are some of the places you've been? Um, outside of this country, mm -hmm. I've uh, presented in the UK, um, five different places in England and Scotland. Oh, let's go. And I presented in Tokyo and in Melbourne, Australia. You've been around and back. That is one you got to go to Scotland. I, <laughs> I would. I've, I've seen it in pictures of where my parents went. But it's beautiful. Go. Is it, is Don't it, miss it, it. It looks dreary to me. Dreary, kind of dreary. Oh, it's. No, it's a, uh, it may be the skies may be gray, but beautiful pastoral. Beautiful pastoral. The people are wonderful. That I, at least that I met. Yeah. Um. Um. Not Edinburgh. Um, yeah. Edinburgh? Edinburgh. Yeah. Um, was, it's like, uh, it's a magical city. We are dancing, talking with Dance for Connection, uh, Donna Newman Bluestein. She's a dance movement therapist. Show us what you invented. Okay, I'm going to help her. <laughs> well, we're going to try to help her show you how it works. And it, it, it connects you. You don't feel so lonely. That's another thing, too, that you were saying in the article I read that. It helps with people connect not to feel lonely in their uh, If you just hold um, it here, sure. so yeah. we're at the closest end of it. All right, Paul. So these are legs that... These are the, the last parts of it. This is the middle. So it kind of looks like an octopus, which is why I call it an octaband, only it doesn't. It's O-C-T-A band. Yeah. Okay. It's made out of very colorful, as you can see, spandex, so that it stretches, so that when we move, we feel each other. We feel our connection to one another. And it's that sense of isolation that people with dementia suffer from. They don't suffer from loss of memories. We may suffer from their loss of memories. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what they suffer from is feeling isolated. And they feel isolated because we don't know how to communicate with them. And each one of these bands, these octopus legs, is for the persons, different people in the group to grab onto. Right, right. so each one, so 
people can hold on to one each. Yeah. So you can have up to 16 people with this. This is so it's a multiple of eight. There's a the the uh, there's an eight leg and this is a 16 leg. What made you think of this, Donna? It's wonderful. Well, there is um, a, an image in um, the dance therapy profession where one thinks of um, the the group leader, particularly with people who are have difficulty in engaging socially. Um, they'll have an Im there's an image of the the therapist or the group leader as the hub of the wheel. And each of the interactions with people as the spokes. So what I found was with pe people with greater levels of dementia, I had to be in the middle. Maybe not physically in the middle, but I had to connect people. Mm -hmm. the, so even, for example, if we were using a balloon, they would toss the balloon to me, yeah. not to each other. So it would always come oh. through me and to... It's almost else. like you were the trusted parent. Exactly. <clears throat> the one in the middle. Exactly. So it's actually a reversal of what happens early in life, is what happens for people with dementia. And what we really need to do is to take care of them. Yeah. Not as though they were children, but with the same kind of love and care as children. I'm talking about people with advanced dementia. Yeah, sure. And... Um, um, with respect for the life that they've lived mm -hmm. and the experience that still lives inside of them. When people want to connect with you, Donna, do they ask you, how do I meet you? Where do we go? Is there a special place? I mostly do groups. Okay, so, so you so would tell I them work, where you'll be. Right. So I just, I, I go, right now, I work as a consultant, so I go into facilities. They bring the people to me. Yeah. We sit in a circle. Mm -hmm. I introduce myself to one person after another, shake hands, look mm -hmm. them in the eye. I tr make sure that we're connecting through the eyes. If not, I'll come back and try, try it again, again and sure. again and again. And then um, I put on music that makes people just yeah. have to tap their fingers and toes. How can you help it, right? I guess, yeah, it's just, uh, oh. how can you not move to it, right? Right. Oh. So once I see them doing that, then I name what they're doing and I build upon it. I have never met a dance movement therapist. You are the first, and I think it's wonderful. Anybody else in your family inclined musically like this or therapy with people? My daughter is daughter? a social worker, not a not a dance therapist. So, she's but a she social still has worker. to be able to connect with people. That is very right, right. so. You've seen that. She, is she a millennial? But in her twenties. Yeah, she is. yeah. I got one of those. Okay. <laughs> that's a that's a very interesting group. But you know who's catching up to us is the Gen Xers. They're right behind us and not far. There's a very fine line between where the boomers ended 64, 1964, and the Gen Xers 65. They are beginning to hit 50. And it's it's tough for I think we're talking about the senior centers. They're going to be featured too. It's tough for them to oh we got to keep up with the new things to keep people interested. It's not our generation seniors thing anymore. It, our grandparents, well you know, it, it's, there's so many new things to try. What would you say would be the gen? You said all age groups. What do you see the most? Are seniors in your in your work? I only work with people. I only work with older adults and people okay. with dementia. Yeah. Um, there are many people who work across the lifespan. Yeah. I I used to. Yeah. I just find at this point, I'm more effective. I can be more effective. Um, I believe that dance therapy is important. It's vital for people, for for young babies, for early, you know early intervention, for across the lifespan, um, because of the connection to body and particularly expressive movement. Yeah. So there are other forms of body psychotherapies that can be helpful, but dance therapy is about self-expression. Mm. And, and the the physical part of it, it's not like going to your counselor, your psychologist, you know, you're actually, it's not like we talked about living in your head. <clears throat> it's connecting physically without anything asked of you, right? They just grab a hold of one of the octopus legs that, that you, and they can hang on and feel the movement from other people. Right. Do many say no to this? They shy about it, you think? <clears throat> not so much shy as um, maybe they don't have the energy mm -hmm. um, or um, and I, this is only one thing I do in the course of an hour yeah. um, it, but most of the time people will participate in some way I think that's awesome we are talking again with Donna Newton Bluestein and she's from Dedham she is a dance movement therapist uh, dance for connection 
is what she does. And it's wonderful for people, especially if you work a lot with older people who have dementia or maybe some communica other communication problems. Having seen this in my own family with the Parkinson's with my own grandmother, you know, I was still in my early 20s, and it was, it was spooky. And we didn't have and know about dance therapy or anything. I don't know how she would have done. Um, they were in the much older generation. I don't know if they would have accepted it. I don't really know. But obviously today, this should be, I mean, is it very popular? It must be. Getting the word out is important. It's much more popular now. Yeah. And um, for one thing, I think the younger people are more into dance. And so they're flocking to the profession. Yeah. Um, and as they flock to the profession and go out and share um, what they know, it's, it's really having an effect. People are, um, when I started, nobody ever heard of dance therapy. And now m people may know somebody who's a dance therapist. Do you know many people in it now besides yourself? Um, well, I'm very active in the association, yeah. and um, I'm the, actually the spokesperson, the official spokesperson. What's it called? For the, the American Dance Therapy oh, Association. The American Dance Therapy Association. Oh, did you, did you have something there? I'll I'll just do it again. What is it? That's your business card, right? No, this Don't. is the ADTA. The ADTA, the, the dance? American Dance Therapy Association. So, um, there is, um, I think there's a function. They just changed the um, the website. And it used to be that you could find a dance movement therapist in your area. I don't know if that's still the case, but you can certainly contact them, and they're happy. The, uh, the office there is very happy to respond and um, find you. Um, Do you ever get feedback from staff saying, the last time you were here, it was like a miracle with at least one of the people. I mean, they were actually talking about it. What was the feedback that you get? I mean, it has to be pretty good. Most a lot of the time, enriching for you too. Very much so. Very much so. I, I, I it's a joy. It's, yeah. a, it's a joy to me. People say over and over again that um, uh, people do things that they never saw them do. Yeah. Uh, ch you know, adult children will say, "I never saw my mother. I didn't know my mother could do that anymore." Mm -hmm. um, the staff, you know, feel good because they see their their patients feeling joyous sure. or their clients feeling joyous. Yeah. It has to be a good feeling if somebody says to you, Donna, we had such a wonderful um, reaction, and they named come maybe a couple of patients. Do the patients remember your name when you go back, the people who are there? Not usually. Most people don't remember my name. They don't often don't remember what I do, but what they do remember is, I like that person. I yeah. want to do what she's doing. And you were the one, you're the one in the middle, like the parent, that s connects them to the next person. Yes. Do they understand how to hold on to the octopus leg there that you and, and pull and tug? Do they get that? Yes. What happens is I will take one of the, um, so at the end of each of the, the legs, the octopus legs, they're really tentacles, but I call them legs. <laughs> yeah. um, so there's a hem, and so I'll slip my hand um, through it, and then I'll take their hand, slip it over their wrist, oh. put it between thumb and forefinger, and close their fingers. Or I might wrap it around and close their fingers. They don't understand what I'm doing often. Do they ever fight you back? Fight to try and do it? If they don't want me to do it, I won't fight. I won't no. push. Yeah. yeah. I let, yes. But I'm I'm usually talking to them as I'm doing it and saying, yeah. um, "That's okay. I, I you know I can thank you for trying to help me and." Um, but they usually want to hold on to it. Yeah. It's um, soft. It's not threatening in any way. It's soft. It's actually, they're, they're different. Um, you know, I have them manufactured periodically, and they're, they don't all feel the same. So s this one's not quite as silky. Actually, I think the pink is silkier than the, the blue. Mm. But it's soft. You call it, it was spandex, right? It's spandex. So that it, they're all in a circle, and they all get a part of this octopus leg. Do you teach them to pull at the same time, or do they do it different ways? They will automatically pull at the same time. That, well, the combination of the music, so they'll start moving in synchrony. Yeah. So the group as a whole is moving together. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not teaching them. I'm helping them put it on. While I'm doing that, some of them are doing things to the music, and they may already have start, started doing that, mm -hmm. or they're doing their own thing, which is also wonderful. Because we're yeah. the reality is we're individuals Created. and part of a group. What else? You mentioned you do other things besides that. What else do you do with them? So I um, usually will start with a ribbon wand. So it's a stick. It's usually plastic and kind of 
looks like a wand, yeah. and has a long 36-inch ribbon at the end of it. Um, and I'll often have them move that because if they move like this, you don't see very much. But if there's a ribbon coming, then the mo they can see the movement more. Everybody can see it. Yeah. So it increases their effectiveness, their sense of being effective. Yeah. And then the more they see that they're effective, the more they're willing to do. It's encouragement going, yeah. Exactly, e exactly. And I'm naming them what they're doing. Uh, some people are moving it up and down. Some people, this is the windshield wiper movement, I call it. Some people are moving it up high, some people down low. Can we all, you know, um, mm. do it together? They all don't usually do the all together thing, except with the octoband. And they yeah, love the okay. balloon. I know one time I was um, in a group at a corporation, and they had gave us one of those, uh, they don't call them a respite thing, but one of those getaway things or whatever they were. We all had to sit in a circle, and it, this reminds me of it. What did we do? Was it a parachute? We had to pass the ball oh, no. around okay. and talk about something or say something. That's how we got to know each other, by passing the ball around. And then we had to, oh, it wasn't around like this. You had to take it after you had your say and pick something and throw it at them. I never forgot that. Yeah. And that's not therapy, but I mean, that's what this reminded me of. Donna, how can people reach you? Donna at danceforconnection.com And if you have a loved one or someone you know who could benefit by dance movement therapy, by all means connect with Donna because she's been in this for, what, 35 years? She's a pro and she's, I've seen her pictures up close. It's hard for you in the audience to see a lot of them. But, and then the octopus that she, we showed earlier that she designed with all the different legs that go out from it and the people can hold on to it and move with the music and feel each other. If they can't connect up here, they're connecting physically, and that's a feeling, right? And they don't feel so lonely. And as you said, something very important, that we have to learn to connect with them. They don't have to, what, try to keep up with us, right? They can't. No. They can't any longer. Yeah. They have spent their lives doing it. Yeah, and now they they're at a point where they can't. So that's all. There's still a person in there. There's still a person in there. Donna, self thanks exists. For much. Thanks so much for coming on the show. We Thank should have you. you back again. We'll see you next time with you, my guest. Run, river, run. Run through the hills. Run, river, run to the sea. Run, river, run. To your place beneath the sun Run river, run over me Run